Hello and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be taking a look at dangerous driving. As you can probably already tell, uh, it's basically burnout. Burnout 3, very, very strong memories of this sort of menu. The car style, the UI style, and all of the sort of things scream burnout. And I wish... I wish I could recommend this game. I wish this game was good, I'll be honest with you here, um, because I'd love to see more proper arcade races. I'm a massive, massive fan of the Burnout series, so a, a new sort of spiritual successor, whatever you want to call it, would be incredible. Would be, being the optimum word. As I said, visually... This game has very much got it down. Uh, we'll just jump into the SUV class. Um, car design, yeah, everything feels like you would imagine from Burnout. Uh, there isn't the largest selection of vehicles. Those are probably fail race colours. There isn't the largest selection of vehicles. Kind of each class has um, four different variants, each slightly different from the other, but... <laughs> For the most part, it doesn't really matter because the driving physics is all over the place. The, the dri <laughs> driving physics is possibly one of the most bizarre... Th I, I say one of the most bizarre things. We'll get through this loading screen and very quickly see what I mean. Okay, so you play, okay, you've played Burnout before. This will all feel very familiar. The idea is simple. I do this, tap the brake, get a nice boost start and whatnot. Now, first of all, the AI sometimes do that. Uh, we can bump off of cars and play pinball. Now, the takedowns are back. That well, I say take, takedowns back. If you've played, again, any Burnout games, you will know about the takedowns. You know, you, if you want to, if you so wish, uh, you can bop your opponents into the wall. Now, for me, this is the way I tend to play most Burnout games. Certainly, whoa. Uh oh, that's a big air time. Uh, so... <laughs> Certainly if I play a single player against the AIs, I will nudge everything off the road. And you can drive like that on here. Uh, however, you can already start to see, I mean, you will probably be able to see from watching this how quite weird everything is. So, not only is A, the sense of speed a little bit, oh god, a little bit weird. We're doing 180 miles an hour apparently. It doesn't feel like it. And just about every corner we can turn. Now, an arcade racer, of course. I expect it to be an arcade racer. I'm not expecting hyper-realistic handling from the game. That's fair enough. However, there is so much grip in these cars. Outside, oh, I was about to say, outside a few corners, just about everything is flat out if you're paying attention and not pratting around with a with the boost. Now, that makes the races a little bit simple. There are some better tracks than others, but I mean, this is a lot of grip. Now, there is a tap brake to drift option. There is a tap brake to drift option, which I'll try and do at some point coming up toward the corner. But this is even weirder than the uh, Need for Speed 2015 system that I hated because you you don't need to do it a most of the time. But it kind of there yeah, is very difficult to describe. But it's almost like once you've started a drift, you'd better hope that oh we're gonna oh, that's actually a pretty sweet little maneuver. <laughs> Goodbye to you. Um, you're kind of almost locked into the angle it's going. You see, the, the joy of burnout games, the reason why burnout is such good fun to drive, is when you are doing sort of the tap brakes, you can do lots of fine little controls. You can do a lot of fine little adjustments on that, which you just can't do here. To try to straighten the car up is weird. You clonk off a barrier and the car is immediately going straight again. That looks very unnatural and is very peculiar to drive. Now, this is a driving system that you will get used to, to an extent. But it's just not very nice to drive it with. It's just not very, not very good. Uh, also, like the whole, oh god, up there, for example. If you've committed to a corner a little too much, like trying to counter steer is weird. If you try to even just let off the steering slightly, it doesn't really like you doing that. So, yeah, I've, it's very, very odd to drive. Um, as far as, well, as far as the actual races themselves, if you play the burnout games, they, they the work how it is. Yeah. <laughs> Very big jump. Uh, you will be gathering boosts that you can use in this lap here. We might even be able to boost most of our way around on this lap. There is some traffic. Uh, not the most, although it's often in awkward places. Uh, the traffic doesn't always abide by the road. I will say that much. Uh, also, the flying is ridiculous. Uh, you'll be going along, especially with some of the smaller jumps where it's kind of not really the car leaving the ground, but it's just far enough to activate, like, what's in-air control. Your car suddenly becomes a glider. Uh, oh, 
pinged off of that wall. Um, which is a little bit peculiar to get used to, but again, I can live I can live with that. It's, oh, it's the cornering. It's so, so bizarre. Now, you would have noticed around the place, one thing I do like that this game does have that, oh, previous burnouts, or you know, burnout games haven't had. I like the persistent wrecks. It makes it quite an interesting, especially if you play the game like I do, which is AI car turns up. Uh, you put it in a wall. Now, the persistent wrecks mean that over a longer race, not that I've had any longer than a two-lap race so far, but over longer races, you have quite a build-up of wrecked cars. You crash into them, and you will... It doesn't have to be a particularly big crash, and you will be out. So, that is a fun, interesting little feature. I also like uh, one way of, I guess, getting around the hole you're travelling quite quickly, often in oncoming lanes, trying to gather boost and whatnot. I like that pretty much always, pretty much constantly, the AIs in oncoming lanes will be flashing their lights. Now, that means that it's just easier to see. When you're whizzing around and you're looking at distance, you can see if there is a car in the lane you're ahead. Of course, you can see it over a hill, but you can you can see it uh, from a decent sort of distance. It gives you a little bit more time. Oh, we're going to play with pinball. It gives you a little bit more time to react is a neat little quality of, I guess, quality of life. It makes racing that little bit fairer. Um, AI-wise, I mean, they're as rubber bandy as they always were in, uh, in, in Burnout games. I get the, the point of having them quite uh, rubber bandy in this. They're not the most horrendous I've ever seen in a game, full stop. I mean, the idea is, is that it'll stay around to make the racing exciting, because that's the point of this sort of racing. It's not to hot lap, it's not to time trial your way around. Oh, well, that's not normally how that one goes, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> you can see the flashing lights going on. Yeah, I can understand why you would have um, plenty of them keep the AI cars close. Although they never really... They kind of just sit behind you and follow you around until you screw up. And then they might overtake you. Especially if you are abusing the boost like I will tend to. Uh, they don't really ever bother to overtake you unless you make a mistake. And then you have to frantically, you know, catch back up and deal with them. And so on. Uh, yeah, I mean, that wasn't the... <laughs> was, that wasn't the best races. Uh, are we going to be allowed to continue? Okay, cool. Uh, we'll re return to the event selection. Uh, so that was an SUV race. Um, I'll go and... We'll go find a road race. Cause at the end, <laughs> road race is always good fun. All my favourite thing when it came to a burnout game. I mean, like, game mode-wise, we have fairly similar... Um, sort of style of stuff. You've got straightforward races, you've got road rages, uh, you've got the, on the face of it, like a 1v1, beat that to win a car. Uh, survival, you've got like a countdown clock, if you like, try and keep beating checkpoints to keep going, and so on and so forth. Uh, can't remember what Eliminator is. Heatwave is your boost basically has to be used in one go, and if you empty it all in one go, you then get it refilled, as long as you've done a little bit of stunts along the way. It's kind of like the old bur like the burnout system for the race cars in... Uh, Burnout Paradise, Pursuit Your Chaser Car. Uh, but rather than go through all that, let's just jump back down here and find Road Rage. Here we go. So, <laughs> let's go and have a go at Road Rage. Uh, because card takedowns are always good fun. So this is the that's the sedan category of car. Basically, you've got a Tudor car. An advanced sedan that's slightly faster, and then a prototype sedan that looks like something out of Fast and Furious. Uh, we'll go with this. It's got... Uh, I say it's got scaffolding at the back. We're not talking about wing scaffolding either on this one. It's literally got full-on full on scaffolding around the body. There we go. That's the look of the car from the menu loading screen thing. I'm trying to get eight takedowns in, I think, about three minutes for this. But again... It, oh, hello. <laughs> this is also a, a fairly good way to show the... It's, just, it's the peculiarity of the old uh, handling model. It's that ping. It is, it is basically just full-on pinball that we're playing. Uh, for a lot of this. Um, okay, now that traffic is just about making sense. Uh, are we going to see... Uh, uh, the road... Whoa! <laughs> the road system, as I said, sometimes the AIs have spotted in wrong lanes doing all sorts of peculiar things. So you're never quite sure if you go around the corner, even if you're in your lane of traffic. You're never quite sure if there's going to be something. Oh, that's not a car I'm actually going to be competing against. Uh, the, I mean, the levels themselves are, you know, good, good looking enough. Oh, well, we're... Currently, what the hell is happening there? Don't really know. We've played pinball, and that one's gone through the fence. Uh, yeah, but you've got some decent variety. You've got those couple of nice, couple of nice coast roads that I found. You've got this sort of snowy mountain bit that you can can drive around. The tracks on their own would be okay if 
if we just had a half decent, it's a semi-decent hand, <laughs> it's just not there. The pinging off of everything is peculiar, like, I don't know what that was, like, <laughs> it is. I think, I think the cars are, are made of some strange bouncy rubber, that's what it is, that would explain a lot, because they just, just, just bounce at them at funny angles. Now, I'm used to, whoa, what the hell happened to my car? I came out of it alive, somehow, oh. <laughs> going on on the wall. Oh, car. And we're wrecked. Uh, you, you can, you will get wrecked if you bump into some of the uh, traffic cars. Thank you for that. How kind of you. Well, you can go into a wall. Thank you. As ever, you can say, if you're about to have an accident, or you can put your car in such a situation where you would be having a terrible accident, but if you've wrecked an opponent's car, can I land on someone? No, I couldn't, I couldn't land on I don't know whether you can get aerial takedowns or not. But uh, yeah, if you, if you take someone down and your car's in trouble, um, the game kind of like takes charge and will drive it momentarily and keep you away from trouble. Where have you gone? I don't know. Uh, I have, like we said, see the cars do peculiar things, kind of like through the crash barriers. In my second race on this, I managed to wreck my car in such a way uh, that I think I pinged off of an AI car and I managed to wiggle its way through a barrier and get stuck out of the track. Uh, I don't think there's any way to reset the car either way to do that, just to redo the race. And they're not particularly long races. What the physics happened with that initial hit? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Did something. How many takedowns are we up to at the moment? I don't know what my... But, oh, truck! I was looking at the car and wasn't paying attention to the truck with a boat on the back flashing its lights at me. Well, that was silly. I was busy trying to position myself. And I was busy trying to position myself and see how many takedowns I had. We're up to 60. Ooh. I mean, in these conditions, it is even even with the cars flashing their lights, it's difficult to see where anything is happening. You can go that way. That will do the trick. Uh, go for a rollover. And you can bop that way. Sure, unspectacular for them, but it did the trick, and that's the end of the race. So that's, uh, yeah, that's that, 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 that's the road rage. I mean, road rage is always good fun, do not get me wrong. 18 takedowns, I don't know if that's a personal, but apparently it is. You could definitely do a lot more if you didn't crash like a Muppet uh, from all of that. And, I mean, well, I say that's, that's kind of it. Um... It's, it is a shame. It is a shame because I would love to see another sort of proper burnout style arcade racery game work. I would love for it to work, but it's this just this just just doesn't. Uh, the handling is is too peculiar. We'll have, I'll have a go at pursuit because this is a bit of a weird. I mean, this is literally just a. We get police cars, which are always fun, uh, but you've got <laughs> you've got to take down an opponent. Uh, how the opponent has a knife bar, you basically just got to nudge them, but it doesn't matter how hard you hit them, it's basically you have to tap them and that takes away one bit of their life bar and then tap them again. doesn't matter if you properly smack them uh, from high speed, or as far as I could tell when I did this, doesn't even matter if you properly smack them or whether you just literally give them the smallest of nudges, just contact removes one bit of the health bar. Uh, come here, and so we can just go, oh, I missed, <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it does help if you hit the target, and that does generally, generally help, oh, well, we're going to jump over the target, whoop, bop, and then there's, again, it's just that weird physics of what the hell is going on when the cars have connected, whoop, and there, okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's such a shame. Like, I'm actually nudging that car forward, I've got a cannon on the front of my car, how does that work? I mean, there's no real incentive to even try anything creative. Just keep nudging the back of them. Nudge the back of them. Come, oh, and then we've got a corner and we panic and flail around. I don't know if it's also got like 20 kilometers to go of this, and it reckons oh, that, that might be a challenging thing to, to do. Um, and now we're down to two bits of health, and I'm pretty sure it's about where I wrecked it the first time I did this. I know I did it in under a minute, and there we go. We stopped them in a pretty big, spectacular fashion. Yeah, okay, I had a couple of iffy, a bit iffy start. They had about 58 seconds the first time around, and... Yeah. It's a, it's a shame. It, oh, 54 seconds, there we go. <laughs> it is a shame, because, as I said, visually it screams burnout to you. All of the menus, all of the UI, and, and so on, will will absolutely shout Burnout 3 at you. However, go play Burnout 3. That would be that would be my recommendation here. Go play Burnout 3. Go play Burnout Paradise. Hell, I'm not a massive fan of Burnout Revenge, but I play any of the original Burnouts, and I'm afraid to say they are better games, and you could 
I mean, you don't think, I don't think you could quite get a PS2 and a copy of Burnout 3 uh, for less than, than this guy. I think it's about 20, 22 pounds or something. On the, I've got it on the Xbox store. Uh, it might be less elsewhere or whatever, but I uh, don't think you could quite get a PS2 and Burnout 3 for 20 odd quid. Maybe you could, though. And honestly, that's that's a that's a better way <laughs> better way to go. As I said, I, it pains me to say it. I don't want to have to say it, but yeah, it is just it's not very nice to drive on at all. As I said, can I get used to it? to an extent you know you can figure out how best to drive around but it's just not very nice it's just not very nice to to drive on uh sure let's fit it we'll have another we'll have one more one more one, one more road rage and i mean it's not even got the most extravagant you know game mode options as far as i can tell there's no multiplayer as far as i can tell uh we are just it's just this this you go through the career mode which is you know again very similar to the Burnout games of old, and it's, you know, got a mix of, of races and, and road rages and so on. Nothing really new there. What the hell has happened to the loading screen? <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> uh, um, something's got on. I've lost... A, don't tell me I'm going to start with three wheels. I saw some wind turbines in the background. I think they're to blame for this. Um... Is, well, maybe my car is a... Have I got a wind turbine to a road rage event? That would be fun. I'm slightly concerned as to what's going to happen when I press start. Oh, it's not actually letting me start. Um, I can't... <laughs> I can't continue. <laughs> um, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to leave that there. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, go go play... I say unfortunately. Go play Burnout 3. Go, go play Burnout 3 or Burnout Paradise. They are the vastly superior game. You can probably get Burnout Paradise remastered now if you've never played a Burnout game for less than this. And that's got much, much more to do. I've lost all of my wheels now. Yep. <laughs> go, go play Burnout Paradise. That, though, is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.